Now, I want to talk about two other areas you're investing in, the triple Qs and also the KRE regional bank ETF. So explain this to me. One of them's had a big run up. The other one's really volatile. Give me the elevator pitch on both, why you're putting money in both right now. Well, when you look at the cues, Frank, I really like we've bounced off this 322 area about two or three times now, and it just keeps sort of popping above it and popping ahead and popping above it. And that would be more of a pivot point trade. If it'll break with with some with some real gusto above 322, I think you've got a new rally in the uh, in the Nasdaq 100 all the way up to maybe 375, 380 on the cues. I think it's a really attractive buy if we can break above that 322 level. And you're talking about the regional banks. You know, they're pricing in the regional bank, Frank, like they're going out of business. Well, that's not true. There's some there's some risk inside some of these regional banks, but some of them are doing quite well. So I think it's way overdone to the downside. I could, I think you could see a 5 to 10, maybe even 15 percent uh, traders pop, as I call it, where you know traders want to come in and take this trade, take the risk and, and look for a short term uh, uh, gain in, in that sector. I think it's just way overdone. OK, so you're also bucking your own personal trend right now. You're 95 percent in the market before you had a lot more in cash. So. Give us a sense. What are you doing when it comes to portfolio protection for your clients, especially when you're so deep in the market right now? Yeah, well, you know, you got to look at stuff like industrials right now. Industrials are, are quite a bit oversold. They haven't moved up like the uh, the Nasdaq has. You know, the Nasdaq and the Fang <clears> stocks <throat> have really led this market higher from January forward. But there's a lot of value out there. If you look at like the industrials, I think you need to start moving money a little bit away from growth, a little bit away from tech over in industrials. I really like Raytheon. I think Raytheon's a great stock in that sector. They're doing a great. Uh, they're making a lot of money. They just raised their dividend. You know, the the manufacturer of Jarek Jet uh, um, engines is just going through the roof. And when you look at the value of a plane, the, the value of a plane is actually in the jet engines themselves. So Raytheon is set up just perfectly for a uh, a good defensive play because they should. They've got a backlog of, uh, of inventory that they need that, that's being purchased and they're being built right now. Okay. So I think it's a wonderful play. All right, so you're mentioning a defensive play. I want to ask you very specifically, we're looking at these debt limit talks right now. What are you telling your clients about preparing for the debt limit? Are there certain sectors, or a, pers a possible debt limit default, I should say? Are there certain sectors that you're just flat out staying away from? Are there certain moves you're making right now? Well, the banking sector, <clears throat> unless you're going to play a short-term pop, like I mentioned a minute ago, the banking se sector is a little bit of a, you know, a shaky, shaky area to play. But with the debt limit, you know, 100 percent of the time, the Congress has come back and they've made a negotiated deal and they've worked through the debt limit. So I'm betting that, it, that this time's not going to be any different. They'll get down to the wire, but they're going to they're going to they're going to get a deal out of this. So I think it's a lot of saber rattling. I think it's a lot of uh, unnecessary nervousness that's being thrown into the market and thrown on the American public. They'll work their way through it. 